Hello, today I'm talking to Jackie Mattox, who is founder and president of Women in Electronics, or WE. WE is dedicated to the professional and personal development of women in the electronics industry. It has four main goals, to empower women through virtual event discussion groups, to develop women with a professional and personal leadership program, to advocate for women through its mentor program, and to celebrate the accomplishments and advancements of women. So, Jackie, welcome to EWTV. Tell thank us you. a little about why you started WE. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. I appreciate that very much. Um, so, really, the reason that I started Women Electronics with my executive team, um, Monica Highfill and Amy Keller, who have been alongside since the very beginning, it was an idea um, to form a community more for women because I had taken some time off from being in the industry and when I came back I was a little surprised to see that I was still one of the younger ones and um, you know that that I was still one of the only women so I had been used to going to a lot of the executive conferences um, and being just me and a lot of the guys and it was good I had a great run I had a great career there was no real issues there other than when I came back, I was just surprised, right? Because I had taken a while off and um, to come back and see that things hadn't progressed in that way was a little bit alarming. And so I decided, you know, let me pull together a little conference. In 2017, we pulled together about 20 women from across the country and decided, you know, is this something that other people feel is valuable is there a reason for women to come together is there a need for it so overwhelmingly yes there was we met and we had a full lineup a conference in 2017 and um, it was amazing it was magical and it was validation um, and so women in electronics has never been uh, women against men or anything like that it's all about unity I've had an amazing relationship with my male counterparts, respect, admire them, love them. Um, but we do face certain issues as women in our industry. So it's just time to talk about that and to see why are women not rising up? What is going on here? And let's talk about it together um, and so that we can all rise together. So all the data supports that um, it's just beneficial for business overall for more diversity. So that is the inception. That's that's why Women in Electronics was started. Okay, thank you. So we're three years on. Um, now you have a program you mentioned of personal and professional development, leadership development. But I, I wondered how is that different from say a managerial course that can apply to so many other industries? Well, I think the beauty of Women in Electronics is that it's specific leadership issues that you actually can apply anywhere, which is amazing. But our community is specific in our industry. We do have a very complicated industry in some areas. We The channel is, is a little complicated. So to be able to collaborate with people in the channel who understand what we face in our industry um, is very valuable. So yes, um, some of these skills, the leadership trainings we do are transferable. You can go just about anywhere and utilize those skills, which is amazing. Um, but I would say through our chapter meetings and different events, we're able to pull it down into the level to impact our industry. And so we are, um, Women in Electronics is for the industry, specific for our electronic component industry. So all the leadership development training that we do, we actually relate it to what's happening in our industry. Okay, so it's, it's very in electronics specific. So, and you've got some uh, some big name sponsors from the electronics industry, haven't you? Yes, yes. Yes. So you've yes. got uh, Avnet and DigiKey, I think. What support do they offer? So we have a list of sponsors who came alongside of us from the very beginning, you know, and really the sponsors that I'll name, really, they sponsored us at a time when we didn't even have a website. We had a concept and we told them what we were trying to do. And these leaders 
came alongside of us because they said, yes, we do agree with what you're doing and we're gonna get behind you being able to put this together. So this is where I'm talking about the men and women coming together. If it wasn't for our male colleagues um, funding us from the beginning, we wouldn't be here right now. So those companies, Amphenol, Avnet, Aero, Digikey, Kemet, TTI family of companies, uh, AVX, and um, TE. So these are all of our existing sponsors. Um, some of them were the first few years um, came alongside of us. Like I said before, we had nothing, but that is our, those are our current sponsors. Cornell Dublier is another one too that I didn't mention. So we have about nine sponsorship companies that help fund us and we're looking for more. Um, in fact, we're talking about Europe right now uh, because you know we've just launched in Europe. We're looking for sponsors in Europe. So all the sponsors I mentioned um, are funding us here in the US. We have one global relationship right now that's with TTI family of companies. So we need some European sponsors so we can hire people over there and really get this program off the ground in Europe. But can you tell us a little bit then about the leadership training and the, the mentor program that's offered? Okay, so the leadership development training, we'll start with that. Uh, we do once a month and we focus on personal and professional leadership. So we have a life balance series as well as a, a professional development series once. So it's two trainings a month. And these are amazing trainers that we hire that are very well trained in leadership development. Um, we address all kinds of issues that affect women in leadership. One of the primary um, issues that affects women is confidence, self-doubt, those kind of issues. It doesn't matter where you are in your career, how high you are, what level you are. Those are the primary issues that women face as leaders. So we address those types of topics, um, unconscious bias, emotional intelligence, um, negotiations, things like that. Um, we're adding a business acumen program, what I'm super excited about, um, to the mix as well. So we're trying to get women really trained up, recognizing where we personally have some barriers and pushing past that. We're finding that women are not going for those next position uh, jobs because they have self-doubt. And they're seeing their male colleagues going forward, but they're not. And, and there's a lot of issues surrounding that, but it all starts with it. It all starts with ourselves. Are we having the conversations? Are we communicating? Are we expressing our needs? Are we talking about our challenges? Are we being perfectionist too much? So these are all the things that we address to push past our own personal barriers. So it's not about pointing a finger at somebody else. It's about looking at ourselves first and saying we do have the opportunity, how are we gonna push past our barriers? So that's the leadership development program and the mentorship just goes alongside with that. So we're finding that women are typically not mentored up to the level men are and there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the main reasons is um, just casual, informal mentorship. So men tend to really gravitate towards a more informal mentorship program where they just, hey, let's meet at the pub and have a beer. <laughs> and, and they get a lot of mentorship through those types of engagements. Women typically would not want to go to their superior and say, hey, do you want to go meet me for a beer? <laughs> so um, we tend to like more of a formal program. So what Women in Electronics has done is created an industry-wide formal mentorship program where we connect our members with people they never would have met. It could be across the globe. Um, so it's that way of forming that connection, managing that process, but within it, they create their own relationship. They create, you know, when they want to meet, how they want to meet, how they engage with each other. And it becomes more informal as they start going along. So it's great for our male leaders because they get to participate in creating a lasting legacy. And it's also great um, for our um, female leaders who have been in the industry as well, who get to mentor and have something that they want to give back and don't want somebody to struggle in the way that they did. And it's amazing for our rising leaders, um, even seasoned leaders to be mentees. We all can be mentees and mentors 
um, alongside the whole time through our career. I'm a mentor right now in the program. I would love to be a mentee next time around and, and have another leader mentor me about a lot of things. So this is a, a real big plus uh, for membership with Women in Electronics. So um, that was one of the membership benefits of, of Women in Electronics. What, what else? There's events you were talking about. Presumably they're all virtual this year with, with COVID. I would say that one of the other main benefits would be our chapters or in Europe we're calling them our division meetings. This is amazing, I have to say. I'm so excited because um, yesterday we just had our uh, Q4 chapter meeting in Europe and we had our first male <laughs> participate in our chapter meeting and um, he was he's the head of TTI in Europe and let me just tell you this was an amazing meeting so we get to come together the women and men to discuss what the leadership issues are as it pertains to women in our industry and we get to have open and honest and professional discussion and it, people have aha moments we get to talk about things you normally would never talk about and it's presented in a way that's very um, appropriate and professional and people leave with um, some key takeaways and things they could do different and things to think about and ways to improve for all of us. So this program is proving to be very beneficial for women and men in the industry. We have a council that has formed in Europe. So we do have somebody heading that up with a team of people in Europe. Um, we're looking to spread the word. Um, we're very grassroots effort. And because of the GDPR laws, we cannot add people to our mailing list if they don't themselves go and opt in. So really it's a grassroots effort. If you wanna be involved with Women in Electronics, join our mailing list um, in Europe. We'd love to have people participate in our chapter meetings and, and start to see what we're all about, connecting people. We're finding that in Europe, the issues are the same. So in the US, all these challenges we faced as female leaders, it's just as much in Europe, if not more. So we're finding that there definitely is a need. I would say there's maybe a little hesitation with worry how the men will take it. So if you are a member of women in electronics, you are saying you're a woman leader <laughs> in the industry. And some people don't like to separate themselves like that. And that is part of the mental barriers we have to get past. Because part of women electronics is embracing the fact that we're female leaders. It's embracing what we bring to the table. It's acknowledging the challenges and talking through it and not being ashamed of anything. Um, so we're not trying to train everyone up for women to be like men. We want women to offer what we offer as women to come to the table and for men to offer what they offer coming to the table. So when you get that parity of women and men coming together, that's where the magic is and, and that's where the company's profits increase. So there's a, a figure of 19%. If you have gender parity at the table with decision making positions, your profits on average will go up 19%. The, this is amazing. There's many statistics out there that prove the gender parity is the more diverse you get, the more profits increase. Say one of the biggest obstacles we have at Women in Electronics is women. <laughs> because women tend to be perfectionists, not only with themselves, but with other women. So there's a judgment, there's a, you know, something of that nature that goes on. And so what we would like to do, instead of competing with each other, let's come together as colleagues in the industry. Let's highlight each other, let's celebrate each other. And let's, let's talk through ways we can manage conflict and not tearing each other down. If a woman tears another woman down in business, you're tearing every woman down. You're setting everybody back. So we need to educate ourselves on even just women coming together and really collaboratively supporting each other. We don't always have to agree with everything, but there's ways of handling things and being professional with each other. So once we take the competition out of the equation, 
things start to really improve. And so I'm finding with women in electronics, our community of women is amazing. It's very interesting, the, the dynamics of how uh, men and women work together, the idea of women having to feel that they have to justify why they're sitting at that meeting room table. And it's very intimidating to stand up and go against the grain. So that's where the education comes into play. And that's where the community and the support comes into play and the mentorship to talk through all of this and to even catch yourself to say, am I emotionally intelligent enough to know when I'm struggling to know, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm having a hard time speaking up um, and just even recognizing it. So this is everything that we work on with Women Electronics. It's really fun. Now that you're in Europe, where, where next? Are you looking to move into South America, um, Asia? Well, we are a global organization. Actually, right now, anybody across the globe, if they wanted to, could join Women in Electronics. But we're trying to take a very systematic approach. Um, I would say the beauty of us starting in Europe, let's just start there. It's interesting because people say, well, where in Europe? You know, Europe's a big area. I found it to be fascinating on our uh, chapter meeting yesterday where we opened it up to all of Europe. We had people from France and Germany and Italy and UK. It was amazing just to have all the different perspectives just even within Europe all on one call. Yes. So I would say that we're going to spend some time really developing Europe. Um, we're going to get the sponsorship funds. We're going to get the people hired. Right now, I'm overseeing everything globally. Um, but once we feel confident that that is able to run on its own, then we will start in Canada and Mexico and Asia. So we have a systematic plan of how we're going to go about things, but it, it's going to take a little while to make sure each of the areas wherever we go are, are self-sufficient and can run. So for instance, in Europe, we really would like to hire somebody from Europe. So have that European perspective. So we don't want to have to dictate um, what it should be. There might be separate issues for women that come up that we want to address in Europe. So having said that, I will always oversee um, and our team will oversee everything going on, making sure that we're staying in line with the Women in Electronics mission and goals, and it's all under that umbrella. So we're doing it very systematically and very carefully. It's impressive. It'd be um, very interesting to, to see how you go in, first in Europe and then in some of the other territories. But uh, perhaps you'll come back and talk to us with, a, with an update for Europe and, and plans in a couple of months' time. Who knows? Yes, we'd love to. You'd be very welcome. So I think we'll wrap up there now, Jackie, but for anyone who is interested in getting involved, you're looking for leaders and you're looking for members in Europe, aren't you? Yes. So we're looking for sponsors in Europe who can get behind our program. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization um, based in the U.S. So we are looking for sponsors. Um, we're looking for membership for women to join. Um, my message to the women you do not have to ask permission <laughs> from anybody. This is an organization you can join on your own. You, 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 you know, that's the message we want to say to women is the beauty of it is you do not have to wait for someone to tell you it's okay. You can start your own leadership development now. Um, if it ends up to be where your company writes it off or whatever happens on the back end, the membership is two ninety seven for a year the value is thousands. So that's why we need the sponsorship companies to get on board so we can keep the membership low enough for the women to join. So as we're going along, yes, will many companies buy memberships? Will they help support that effort? Yes, but I encourage women not to wait. Get on board now, be a part of the community, be a part of the movement, and um, let's grow together. So um, please contact me if you ever want to ask me a question or you want to have a conversation. It's Jackie at womenandelectronics.com. Would love to talk to you. Well, Jackie, I hope you get lots of uh, inquiries from both men and women in our electronics industry. And as I said, perhaps we can catch up again in a couple of months time to see how you're getting on. Thank you for your time. Bye bye now.